he have uh, other guys that do this in his
Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be in your house tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this song, the cross, and what it's about. Lord, we appreciate the cross of Jesus Christ. I thank you for Miss Pauletta's testimony this morning in Sunday school. Lord, well, she started out by saying if she was going to begin with the blessings of you in her life, she'd have to start at Calvary. Because if it wasn't for Calvary, Lord, we wouldn't have any of these things that we have. We wouldn't have Jesus in our heart. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know what the grace of God was about. We wouldn't know about the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't know really about the Word of God. Lord, we thank you for the cross of Jesus. We thank you for what it means, what it's done in our lives. Thank you for this church being here because of the cross and the folks that have been saved throughout these 30-something years. The church has been here getting closer to 40 now. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to the church. And we pray that you'd help us tonight now. Lord, uh, forgive us for every sin. Forgive us for the things today that we've said or done that we shouldn't have. Clean our hearts up, Lord. Remove the things that are a hindrance to the Holy Ghost. Help us, Lord Jesus, to hear from heaven. Help us not to just go through the motions, but to be challenged by the Holy Spirit tonight in order to be better for your glory. I pray that you'd bless every song and every word that is said. We thank you for the good things we've heard about today. Thank you for the souls saved in the jail this morning, the big prison this morning, the jail this afternoon. We trust even right now as Brother Dwayne is still there at the jail that you'd bless him. And then, Lord, we ask you to be with this service. Make it what you'd have it to be. We want it to be a blessing to you and here to your people. We love you. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen while the choir sings a little bit more. Remember, it's a privilege, privilege to sing. Manger in Bethlehem held Mary's little lamb, and across all Golgotha held the nails that pierced his hand. Then Satan said, I've won, I told him. The tomb said, I'll hold him. And death said, He's mine forevermore. For three days and nights, Hell had a jubilee. But just as dawn was breaking, Satan thought he'd check and see. But the tomb said, I cannot find him. Death said I could not find him He got up and when he left He took my keys Thank you. 
I'll stand while the choir's coming down and shake hands with somebody around you there tonight. Grab you a hymn book. We're going to sing together now. 319. Brother David sings this one quite a bit for invitation. Wonderful, wonderful words in this old hymn. I read the story today behind the hymn, and it said, you can see her name there, Frances Havergal. She was going to visit some family and friends, going to stay five days with this family. She said there was 10 people in the family and some of them she knew was unsaved and this is the way she phrased it. Said, and the others were not rejoicing Christians. And so some were saved and obviously the others were either backslid or they were dead is the way she looked at it. And so that she wanted to be a blessing in those five days she was visiting with them. She said after she'd been there for a day or so, she'd been praying and that the Lord had given her this prayer. She's praying, Lord, give me all that is in this house. She wanted them all to get saved and all to get right with God. And then in the story I was reading, it said, and he did just that. And so they got saved. The family, it said, the Lord touched them all. And she said the last night that she was there, she was so happy that she couldn't hardly sleep. And so she started writing down some of these things. As she was just rededicating her own self to the Lord in praise and thanking him for how good he was. She said she started pinning these words down. And it ended up at the very last line, ever only all. And she emphasized all for thee because that's what she had asked for. That all of them in that family would get saved and get right. And the Lord had done it for her this week. You think about that story while we sing these wonderful words of prayer to the Lord. Here we go. Take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to Thee. Sing it now. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love at the impulse of now this is in a key that's good for men to sing lead. So ladies, see if you can find some of those harmony parts and any of you guys that can as well. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Sing it now. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Take my voice. Take my voice and let me sing. Listen to this. Always, only for my King. Always, only for my King. Verse 3, sing it now. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages for... How about that? Take my silver and my gold not of my would I withhold, not of my would I withhold. Let's sing this one a cappella once we get started. Wonderful words in this last verse. Sing it now. Take my love, my God, I pour at thy feet its treasures. Listen to this now. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee, ever only all for thee. Good singing. That's wonderful, isn't it? Brother Matt's going to come with some announcements, some prayer requests. You listen, please. Amen. That was good singing. I want to just mention a couple prayer requests to you tonight. 
uh, Brother Doug Cook, we mentioned his wife this morning. He's, he's here in the service with us tonight and said she was making some improvement today. I want to thank the Lord for that. So if you continue to keep Miss Lucille Cook in, uh, in your prayers, and some of you ladies that might know her, we've got a couple people in mission, Miss Gail Grant and also Miss Lucille. So it might be good to pick up the telephone and uh, ask to speak to them, let them know we've been praying for them. Also, I've seen uh, Miss Worley here tonight. Her mom passed away. Not too long ago, I want to just continue to pray for them, but the Lord would encourage them as they get ready to get back on the road. And also, we got a prayer request. Uh, Brad Love come tonight. His mom and dad's uh, physically having a hard time. Said his mom broke both her hips, and his dad has fallen too. So had some accidents there with his parents. So if you would uh, please pray for those, I know it'd be a blessing to him. And also want to mention this to you. We're going to be moving our Wednesday night service on September the 10th, which will be a week from this coming Wednesday. Uh, we'll be moving it down to the Nebo Camp Meeting where um, we'll be having a service there that night. Uh, I'm not sure who's preaching. I think maybe... No, I, I don't remember either, but I know the youth choir is going to be singing that night. So we'd like for some of you to bring your young people out. Brother Jason really wanted me to encourage you to do that. Uh, on September the 10th, a week from this coming Wednesday, all of our services will be moved out to the Nebo Camp Meeting. And we'd love to have you there, especially your young people, so we could try and be a blessing to the folks that have come. Uh, also, want to mention to you that the Senior Saints will have a fellowship on September the 6th. We had the times a little bit mixed up this morning. That'll start at 5 o'clock if you want to participate in that. And that they'll be singing, let's see here, dinner and preaching. So a lot of, a lot of good activity there. I uh, want to maybe get in on that if you can. Also, on November the 8th through the 14th, our missions trip to Detroit. Uh, we'll be getting ready for that. So some of you that are interested, uh, be keeping that in mind, if you would, those dates, November the 8th through November the 14th. And uh, tonight, right after church, Zion Hill will be having their jubilee that they do every year, the pre-Labor Day jubilee. And I think uh, Dr. Joe Arthur and T.D. Burgess will be preaching and they've got, um, they've got a multitude of groups singing, breaking ground, swordsman quartet. So if you like good singing, good preaching, you can get in on that tonight right after church. Let me mention this. I'll let the preacher come. Uh, we've got some gentlemen been with us in service today. Let me get their names right. Brother Derek Baxdale and Josh Johnson. They're graduates of uh, West Coast Baptist College, and they're with Tom Farrell's ministry. They'll be uh, going heading up to the wilds tonight after the service here, and I can feel the preacher stomping his feet. Uh, let me just give a personal testimony about yeah. uh oh, amen. Mike, got the mic. did you say these preacher boys are going to go get wild tonight is that what you said oh going to the wilds tonight amen we don't want we, we had them two services and ruined them praise the lord appreciate these fellas coming by one's from wyoming and one's from california they're a long way from home and uh and just decided to come to church with us today so that was a blessing as they're headed over to the wilds not too far from here so praise the lord for that let's go ahead and have the ushers come and we'll take up our regular sunday night offering <clears throat> Let's see, I thought I saw, where's, where's Peyton at? Is he in here somewhere? Where's Peyton at? Where you at, Peyton? Far corner. Stand up over there, Peyton. How old are you? 14. Brother Peyton preached off this morning at Brother Bo's church down in Burlington, preached a youth service there for them. I praise the Lord for that, brother. You can be seated. Heard that he done a great job. Saw his mom and, daddy come, mom and daddy come in there just a minute ago, and I thought, what a blessing. No doubt they took their boy to preach today off at another church. That is wonderful. You can't beat serving the Lord with your family. So I praise the Lord for that and proud of Peyton for what the Lord's doing in his life. And I uh, want you to be praying for these young folks that the Lord would bless them and help them. All right? Let's go ahead and pray. For the offering, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in church. As I've already said, we do pray that you bless the offering tonight. Multiply it and bless the service. All these prayer requests that Brother Matt mentioned, we ask you to be with the folks that are sick, that are struggling, that are having a hard time physically. We pray, Lord, that you would touch them. Use the doctors and nurses to have wisdom to be able to help them. And Lord, we do pray that you would uh, touch those that are struggling in other ways. Some are having financial problems and family problems and all kind of things. And we're thankful that you are the answer to all of it. We do pray for these uh, preacher boys that are with us. We ask you to bless them and what they're doing this week, studying, trying to learn. I pray that you bless their ministries. But we ask you to help the service now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, children, you go ahead and collect the change. All right, children, where you at? I don't see many children. Here we go. There you go. If you haven't been here on a Sunday night, they collect change. and Some of them study it a great deal.
Anybody got change in your hand and nobody's taking it from you yet? Here in the back, here in the back. I need somebody to, and over here, Miss Tildy. Oh, oh, go back. Somebody go back. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Send her to the back. There you go. Send her on back. There we go. Anybody else? Brother Brian's got a hundred dollar bill he needs to get rid of. Anybody want to go and get that? Actually, his wife's got all the money. She's got the money. Praise God. Is that right, brother? Amen. Bring what you got, children. David. Brother David. Knocked her down. What kind of daddy? Hey, I was live stream, son. The whole world saw that. Yeah, we got some DSS workers in here. That's all I'm saying. Be careful, buddy. Shove that little baby down. Bless her heart. All right, the ladies' ensemble is going to come and sing for us. First Corinthians chapter 11 is where we're going to be. While you turn in First Corinthians 11, and they're coming and getting their microphone set up and everything, let me give you some praises. We did pray for Miss Nancy. Raise your hand, Miss Nancy, just in case. This is Miss Nancy Thompson. Been battling cancer for a good while, and went this last week for some checkups and to have her report removed, and all of that went well. And the report was good. Is that right, sister? Amen. You want to say anything? Praise the Lord. That's a good thing to say. Amen. And so she texted me this morning and asked me to thank all of you for praying. Also, Brother Scott Blake went to have his heart checked this week, and uh, everything came back good on that. They still don't know what's causing his physical problems that he's having, but it was not a heart problem. We praise the Lord for that. And then Miss Shanna's daddy, RJ, we were praying for last weekend, also got to come home. He's doing some better. And uh, Miss Parker said that Miss Gail's doing some better as well. So we thank the Lord for these that are doing a little bit better. Continue to pray for them. And then also, Brother Mike McDaniels texted me this morning, but I'd already come in for the service that he had three saved at the big prison today, and he gets to preach there, I think, twice a month. I believe it is something like that. Is that right, Miss Nikki? I think twice a month he preaches there, and uh, the Lord's opened that door up, and he had three saved this morning, and then uh, also, I think Brother Allen had, I don't see, where's Allen? How many you have? had four saved? Five saved. Five saved at the jail this afternoon, so we praise the Lord for that. And then Miss Krause come and talk to me. Where's he at? Where's Nick at? Stand up in your seat there, Nick, so they can see you. Stand up in the seat. Climb up on it. This is Nick right here, and he's six years old. Was it this week, Miss Krause? This last week, he got saved. Amen. Let's give Nick a hand for getting saved. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Amen. Now we're hoping he can make a difference in Miss Krause's life, and it'll be a great victory. Praise God. So we thank the Lord for what he's doing. I'm glad people can get saved, aren't you? Amen. Amen. Listen to it while they sing 1 Corinthians 11. Call it progress and we must conform or we will be led by the change. This new world religion serves a God of their choice, but salvation still comes in one name. That name is Jesus, sweet rose of Sharon, spotless and pure Lamb of God. Jesus, Promise Emmanuel, God's Son, Jesus, my Lord and Creator, who witnessed and conquered the grave. Jesus, this world's only Savior. Jesus, what a wonderful name. Soon all the great leaders who sleep in their Lord of all glory, the ground King of peace, all creation will thunder His name. That name is Jesus, sweet rose of Sharon, spotless and pure Lamb of God. Jesus, Lion of Judah, promised Emmanuel, God's Son. Jesus, my Lord and Creator. Jesus, this 
Listen, I'm going to have them sing the one they always sing when I get them up here. I was thinking about Nick getting saved. He got saved because of Jesus. Amen? And because the gospel of Jesus Christ came into his life. Uh, listen, not good circumstances brought it to pass. Do you understand? Uh, his life hadn't always been what you would draw or write a life out to be. And because of some of them negative circumstances, he has ended up with Miss Krause and Brother Kidding him for a little while. These two have. And because of that, he's been able to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? And now he has a heavenly father. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I did say it, but it was still good. Amen. A heavenly father that will never fail, that will never leave him, never forsake him. Always be there. Always be exactly what he's supposed to be. And one of these days will bring him home. He will not fail to bring him home. Bring you all the way home to heaven. Amen. Where a mansion is prepared for him. They started building on it about a week ago. Amen. Put his name over the door. It'll be special. He'll be special there. You know why? Because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the blood still has the power to save. Amen. Because you can be saved is what this song says. Aren't you glad you can be saved? Hallelujah for being saved. Amen. Glory to God for being saved. You can't beat it. You can't beat it, man. You can try. I preached this morning about what all the things of this world, uh, all the things that the people of this world are chasing after. And you know what? Not one of them can beat this. It doesn't matter. They cannot beat a life given to Jesus, saved by Jesus, blessed by Jesus, lived for Jesus. You just can't beat that, friends. You may make more money. You may do more things. But you still won't beat the life that has been changed by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah for it. Amen. It's what you ought to want for our children. It's what you ought to pray for, for your own life, for the lives of your children and grandchildren, is that they experience the blessed life of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll try and sit down. Y'all sit Scars of sin and shame. There is hope and there is healing in the power of Jesus' name. There is a way, there is a light, there is life in the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. You can be saved. He paid the price.
Brother Zach, why don't you stand up and tell them where you were when you got saved. Tell them about when you got saved. Miss Kay, won't you tell them where you got saved? Stand up there and tell them. Is. Brother Rellin, won't you stand up and tell them about when you got saved, brother? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's still good, ain't it, brother? Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Dwayne, won't you tell them? Bless his holy name. Amen. Jessica Scott, won't you stand up and tell him? His holy name. Miss Becky, you can just stand since you got the bad back, but won't you? I said you can sit, it's what I meant to say, but you stood anyway. I said stand, but I meant sit. She's had back surgery, I'm making her jump up and down. Won't you tell them about when you got saved? Yeah. Yeah, boy. Amen. Yeah, boy. Amen. Michael Lynn, won't you stand up and tell him, son? Yeah, you were, because you're a little boy still, but that's all right. <laughs> tell him where you were, buddy. <laughs> Amen. Do you know how old you were? Do you remember how old you were? Four. Four years old. So that was that when y'all still lived up there? Praise God, got saved in the north. Amen. Isn't that something? Listen to this second verse. It basically, these two verses basically say that it's for everybody. These are all different stories right here from all different backgrounds. You can go ahead and start playing, sister. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is for whosoever will. Amen. I was texting with a young man yesterday that's having a hard time with his assurance and He's asked to be saved multiple times in his life, and I believe sincerely so. And so I texted him finally, and I said, Son, I said, the only way you're not saved is if when you came to him as a young boy, sincerely asking, he rejected you. I said, which goes against everything in the Bible. Because <laughs> he said he will not cast you out if you come to him. Amen. 
And I'm glad it can be for anybody. Aren't you glad of that? Listen while they sing it. You say, well, what about, what about the message? I'm preaching and then we got extra stuff too. Praise God. I love church, don't you? Listen to this good song and then we'll get the message. For the heart that is longing for love. singing ladies good singing first corinthians chapter 11 i mentioned this morning that we need some more help on the cleaning team particularly with the old building and uh, we've had a few folks come up and mention it to me brother dan wasn't able to be here tonight and so we've got a sign up sheet on both sides here if you came up and mentioned it to me that you'd like to help with the old building then i want to uh you got this one brother hope so since i just jerked that one off Come up and sign up after the service there to help with that old building cleaning. I think we got enough that you won't have to do a whole lot. It'll just be maybe an hour or so a week or a couple uh, to get it all done together as a team. First Corinthians chapter 11, it's good to be saved. Now, I am going to try and hurry because we've got something we need to do at the end. Very short, uh, we're actually going to do a baby dedication at the end of the service tonight. And so uh, I will uh, get through these thoughts here and then we'll jump to that. And we'll be gone here in just a little while. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. I want you to look at this with me. This is uh, the Apostle Paul telling the Corinthian church about the taking of the Lord's Supper, the communion. And so let me show you a couple things here. Really, I just want to pull out a couple of words to use tonight. 1 Corinthians 11, 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Now, that's not the message at all, but let me just go ahead and say, here is Paul explaining that the taking of communion has nothing to do with salvation. It doesn't make you saved at all, all right? It's just something we do uh, as often as we do it in remembrance. It helps us to remember that the Lord gave his body and shed his blood on the cross for our sins. And so as often as you want to do it, as you drink it in remembrance of me, verse 27, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. And uh, I want to focus in on what he said there at the first part of verse 28. But let a man examine himself. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd bless the thought tonight. I pray that you'd challenge us a little bit. Just going to remind the church of some things we talked about over the last couple of years. And I pray that you'd help us in the next little bit. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. That was a good one by Brother Nick, the newly saved one right there, praise God. In this text, Paul, as I said, is explaining the Corinthian church a little bit about the Lord's Supper. And in doing so, he was explaining that it is a good time to uh, examine yourself. He said you need to check up and make sure that you know your heart's right, that your life is right, that you've been trying to please the Lord as you partake of this. He goes on in verse 29 to say that some have brought damnation to themselves uh, for not doing so. And so the Apostle Paul is showing us that there are times in our life when we need 
need to examine ourselves, examine himself, and that the uh, taking of communion is one of those times. In 2 Corinthians 13, 5, he says it again to him. He says, examine yourselves. And that's what I want us to do for just a few minutes tonight. I want to remind you tonight about what being a part of a New Testament Baptist church is supposed to do for you. By the way, let me just say this. I still like being a part of a New Testament Amen. Baptist church. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful that I'm Baptist. It didn't make us better than anybody else. It does make us, I believe, closer to the Word of God than everybody else. Amen. Not by pride, but just by the grace of God. We heard the truth. We believe the truth. And I am thankful for the word church. I saved at church. I met my wife at church. About every good thing that's happened to me and my family is because of the church. I'm not trying to be negative tonight, but I do have a problem with people making light of the word church. I do have a problem with that. Amen. Christ died for, say it, church. church. Amen. And so I'm thankful to be a part of a New Testament Baptist church. But there's some things that a church is supposed to do for you. And what I want us to do tonight is examine ourselves to see how we're coming along in that progression. I'm going to use the banner behind me, the purpose of our church. I put it up there. I guess we put it up there a couple of years ago now, maybe a year and a half, almost two years ago. And at that time, I preached about it a couple of times, explained what it means. Well, some of you wasn't here yet. And so for those that were not here, I want to explain some of it again. For those of us that were here, I want to remind us about the banner and the things that this church is here for. And by doing so, I want to provoke us to do a self-examination tonight. See, God birthed the church. Say amen. He gave his son for the church and he loves the church and he has a reason for its existence. God didn't just throw it out there and say, well, you know, maybe there ought to be a church. No, he had a plan for why he put the church here. Listen, he had a plan for why he put this church here. Now, there's a lot of churches in this county, and praise the Lord for them. A lot of them are very good churches. We make announcements from time to time of other churches having meetings. We're not in competition with anybody. We all thank the Lord for them. But let me say something to you. I believe he birthed this church here as well. And when he did, he had some reasons for that. The four purposes, as you see them on the banner tonight, are knowing Christ, growing in Christ, showing love like Christ, sowing the seed of Christ. Now, when I first introduced these ideas to you, I gave each one of those a, a word. Knowing Christ in salvation. Growing in Christ was maturation, maturing. Showing love like Christ was participation. And then sowing the seed of Christ, evangelization. And so there are some things that being a part of a church like ours should do for you. I want to say a few words about each one. I'm going quick because I want to get to the baby thing as well. But there's a few things I want to say about each one. And while I'm doing that, you need to examine yourself. To be honest with you, it really is like a progression. It's really like a progression in the life of each individual church attender. I'll say member, but even though somebody I know hadn't joined, but you come all the time. Every church person. It really is a progression that ought to, listen, that ought to happen in your life as you are a part of a good Bible-believing church in these last days. And so I want to talk to you about those, and you do a self-examination. You examine yourself to see where you are in this progression. Number one, knowing Christ for salvation. I won't spend too much time on this point, but the first and most important reason that God placed this church here in Mary, North Carolina is so that people could hear the gospel. I didn't know they were going to sing that tonight. I didn't know they were singing tonight. I make them sing that every time they sing. But I didn't know they were singing tonight, but I'm going to tell you something. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the primary reason God put this church here. Hey, it's the primary reason this building is here. It's the reason the buses are there. It's the reason the school is there. It's the reason the camp is there. The very primary purpose of existence for any church ought to be the salvation of lost souls, the presenting of the gospel to this lost and dying world. And I'm thankful that we've had several saved this summer throughout different ministries. Brother Mike, as I said, had three saved in the big prison this morning. We've had folks saved at camp throughout the summer this summer. We've had some saved through the bus ministry, as we often do, and praise the Lord for that. We've had some saved out on soul winning. The teens go soul winning once school starts. They go on Wednesdays. Brother Roy and Brother Steve and some of the guys go out on Saturday mornings. Also some ladies if you want to go, they go out on Saturday while the bus workers go out. They go door to door in Marion and knock on doors and try to tell people about Jesus. And we've had people saved right there at their own home. We've had some folks in church recently that have gotten saved here in our regular Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night services. And we ought to praise the Lord for that. Hey, we've had them saved in the visitor reception room. On Sunday morning, we invite the visitors to come be with us. I remember not too awful long ago, a fellow who said he'd been an atheist sat in there and we began to talk and witness to him and he prayed, asked the Lord Jesus 
Jesus come into his heart. Listen, that's why the church is here. That's the primary purpose for the church is for people to know Christ in salvation. And I'm thankful there are many opportunities for you to hear about the Lord and be saved. So the question is, do you know for sure tonight that you are saved? Well, yeah, most of us. Yeah, preacher, we're Sunday night. I understand that for the most part, Sunday night crowd is probably a saved crowd. But you need to examine yourself. Do you know for sure that you've had this first? Listen, you're never going to make the rest of them if you don't get the first one down. And get the first one nailed down in your heart. That you're saved and you know you're saved. That you have assurance of your salvation so that the devil can't beat you up and make you doubt and do all those things. Because as long as he can make you doubt that salvation, you will not progress through these things as a Christian should. As a matter of fact, why don't we just do this? Why don't you just bow your heads with me here for a second right in the middle of the message. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. You say, are we done? No, we're not done. This is number one. But I wonder who would say this, preacher. I know without a doubt that I am born again. I am a child of God, and if I died today, I know for sure I'd go to heaven. Would you raise your hand? Raise it up good and high. You know for sure. You can put your hands down. Nobody looking around. Now listen, I won't embarrass you, but I want to ask you. I wonder if there's anybody here and you'd say, Preacher, I don't know. I don't know for sure if I died today that I'd go to heaven. Anybody in the balcony be willing to raise your hand and say that? Pray for me. I'm not sure I am saved. Anybody on the main floor, I'm not sure I am saved. Father, I pray that you'd bless. Lord, if there's anybody here that is not sure that you'd deal with their heart, let tonight be the night they take this first step, Lord, and become a Christian in knowing Christ and salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's the first reason we're here. The first, listen, we have failed people if they spend any quality time in any of our ministries and they leave lost. Do you understand? If they go to our Christian school and they leave the most educated person in the world unsaved, we failed them. Because the primary purpose for that school is not to make them the smartest person in the world. The primary purpose is, number one, that they get saved and know Christ. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. I taught you this morning. And so we need to understand, number one, knowing Christ. Secondly, growing in Christ, maturation. Now, our focus throughout the year, our yearly theme this year has been reaching for more. We're striving to fulfill the command given by Peter when he wrote, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was our goal at the beginning of the year that we might throughout the year. And by the way, you understand three-fourths of the year is gone. At the first of the year, we talked a lot about growing spiritually this year. The growing spirit, doing something this year you've never done for the Lord before. Doing some new things for the Lord this year. You know, if you're still waiting to do it, you've almost missed the year. It's three-fourths gone. That's kind of the purpose for this message tonight is to say, hey, we've got one-fourth left. Let's finish real strong for Jesus this year. It could be the last year we have. Would it be a blessing? Me and Brother Relin was talking a while ago. He had had a neighbor to pass away recently and said that he was a saved man. He went to heaven. And I said, boy, we just don't never know. We could go to heaven tomorrow, couldn't we? He said, wouldn't it be good? I said, it'd be good if Jesus would come and get us, wouldn't it? It could be tomorrow. If it's not tomorrow, we should want to do our very best for him. Reaching for more, growing. And one of the things was that we might know more. We're doing a self-examination tonight. Let me ask you this question. How have you done on that? New Man of Baptist Church that are here tonight, that we're here at the first of the year particularly when we challenged ourselves in reaching for more and knowing more, knowing more about the Bible, knowing more of what we believe about the Bible, knowing why you believe what you believe about the Bible, just knowing more Bible, if you will. How are you doing on that? Do you know more about what you believe? Throughout this year, have you made it a point to try to learn? Have you asked somebody if you've got questions? <clears throat> Do you know more scripture? We've got memory verses on our prayer bulletins that we give out on Wednesday nights for the adults. And I'm sure in many of the other ministries they memorize verses. Do you know more verses? Do you know, you say, you mean adult? Yes, adults. When Peter said grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he wasn't just talking about Sunday school children. He wasn't just talking about Christian school kids. He was talking about everybody that's saved. Everybody that's already been to number one now is at number two. And we are commanded to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How are you doing on that self-evaluation tonight? Are you taking advantage of the opportunities our church gives you to grow in knowledge, to know more? Are you coming to Sunday school? Brother Matt's been doing a, a series in his class, uh, I believe, about the contemporary movement, all these churches that are going away from uh, old-time religion and the fundamentals of the faith. Listen, it's been good for almost every... I didn't know he was doing that. We should have just had him do it in here. You know what? It'd be good for us to know that. 
to know what's wrong with getting rid of the word Baptist. What's wrong with having a rock group instead of traditional music like we have. What's, and we need to know that. That's why I did that series on Sunday nights on music. We need to know what we believe about these things. And if you don't know more than you did at the first of the year, I would ask you, why do you not? Because we are doing our best, us and staff and leaders of the church, to try to give you opportunities to grow in your knowledge. How are you doing on some of these things? Are you working on the memory verses? Are you coming on Wednesday night? We've been doing the Minor Prophets on Wednesday nights, and I'm not the deepest Bible teacher in the world, but I've learned some things about the Minor Prophets. I got an email this week from Brother David Brindley sitting right up here, and he said that uh, they were reading, the family was reading, I think his son was reading out loud, and uh, he read over in Genesis when Nineveh was built. And I just talked about Nineveh in the last lesson. I talked about how massive the walls were, and uh, it jumped out at him that that was built. What did you tell me? It was built before the uh, what did you say? Before the flood or before the land? Yeah, before Babel, not before the flood had been wiped out. What are you talking about, man? Good night. <laughs> now, before the languages at the Tower of Babel were confounded, he made a point in his email. He said, "Look, that's what they could do. It was amazing what all they achieved before God confounded the languages." You know what he said? He said, Preacher, I wouldn't have followed that if it wouldn't been for that minor prophet study. That's a blessing in my heart, brother. That's just learning a little bit more. But you got to come on Wednesday night. Are you taking advantage of the opportunities? See, the church is here to help you with these things. And God's checking us out tonight, and you should be checking yourself out. Make sure you're saved. But then how are you doing on the maturation? Are you, let me ask you this. Are you a more spiritually mature Christian than you were this time a year ago? You say, well, how do I know? Well, one way to know is this. Do you handle conflict more spiritually and scripturally than you did then? That's the best way to check your spirituality is uh, your spiritual maturity is conflict. Because everybody does good when everything's going all right. How do you handle conflict? If you handle it by Facebook, then, then you're not spiritually mature. Amen. Now, I'm not against everything that goes on there, but I'm going to tell you something. When something goes wrong in your life, and the way you deal with it is you put vague things on the Facebook about some lady that's, ladies that say this and ladies that do that. Listen, everybody probably knows who you're talking about because you verbally told a bunch. You verbally told 12, then you put the vague thing on there so all them 12 will know who it is and they can comment, oh yeah, I, I hate women like that. <laughs> that is not the spiritually mature way to handle conflict. Amen. Amen. You're supposed to go. We're supposed to go to one another. And listen to this. We're supposed to go to one another with the purpose of gaining that brother back. Amen. Not with the purpose of setting people straight or making sure I win or making sure I'm right and everybody knows it. The whole purpose of going to somebody when there's been a conflict, when you're spiritually mature, is for gaining that brother back. Amen. That means if you have to get a little bit humble, if you have to eat a little bit of crow, sometimes we do that for the purpose of gaining the brother back. Right. So have we spiritually matured any? Grow more self-examination. Don't y'all wish that when I was up here exhorting a while ago, y'all would have started shouting and going to the altar and maybe I wouldn't have preached tonight if y'all would have done that. I gave you a chance, but you missed it. Praise the Lord. Knowing Christ, salvation. Growing in Christ, maturation. Now listen, if you just got mad, then you're stuck here. All right? Well, I mean, was he, first of all, I wasn't talking about anybody that I know of. That I know, if you're writing stuff about me on there, I don't know because I don't have it. Now, if you put it on Twitter, I might see it because I do have Twitter. So don't, if you're sitting there, listen, self-examination, if you're sitting there mad right now at me because of something I just said, then, then you're stuck. You're not maturing. Yeah. Amen. Right. Listen, we preach to young people. We call their names sometimes. We, we point practically right at the one we're talking to and they don't ever get mad. You know what they typically do when you get like that? End up going to the altar. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's don't get upset. Now, I don't know if anybody is upset or not, but if you are, hold on. If you are, grow up. Amen. That's what Peter said. He said, how long are we going to get hung up on this stuff? We've got to get past it. So number one, knowing Christ, salvation. We're doing self-examination. Number two, growing in Christ, maturation. Have you matured spiritually? Are you maturing? And then number three, showing love like Christ, participation. 
The next purpose for our church lines up with the second part of our reaching for more theme. That was this, that we might glow more. We said that we want to know more and then we want to glow more. That came from the Lord's command to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Doing good works, participating in the good things of God, the work of the Lord. See, once a person has been in church for a little while and they've gotten saved and they've begun to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then they should find something somewhere in the ministry to do their part. Their part. You know why? Because everybody has one. Amen. The, the Bible teaches that a church is fitly framed together. That means God brings you in and you've got something that he needs you to help us do. And you ought to strive to want to find that and do that thing. I had a lady come to me tonight talking about the cleaning thing. You know what she said? She said, I told my husband, she said, I've got to find me something to do. And I think that might be it. I thought, praise the Lord. And she didn't know I was going to say this. That's exactly the right spirit. That's number three. That's, hey, I'm saved and I've, I've learned some things and God's been good to me and I'm growing and now I need to find my part. I need to get involved. I need to participate. I'm thankful for those who have gotten on board with the cleaning ministry of the church. It's a kind of new. Uh, and you've been doing a great job. Praise the Lord for you. And I want you to know that that's participation. That's, that's number three. That's a step up for some of us. And you know, for some people, it may be the first regular responsibility that you have had as a part of the church. You know, the security team guys uh, that stand out here and they're on a rotation and they take turns doing that. You know what that is? That's participation. What do you mean, showing love like Christ? Yeah, absolutely. It's doing their part in making the whole thing function right. You wouldn't have, you don't have any idea what I, the other day, Brother Vaughn had four, I think, four major incidences in one Sunday morning. And you know how it all ended up? It all ended up with him on the altar telling a man how to be saved. Amen. Now, isn't that a blessing? See, he was doing all that other stuff so we didn't have to worry about it. So we could sit in here without confusion and without any interruption. And you know what he's doing? He's participating. And there's a whole group of men that do that. And you ought to find your... And it's a regular responsibility. It's not just something, well, if I'm there, I'll do... No, no, no. It's a regular. They're expected to be at their place at their time. It's their part. That's participation. Some of you have never had one of those. Some of you have never had anything in the ministry that is regularly expected of you. You need to get one. Amen. Everybody needs something. Even if, it's, even if it's a small thing, even if, if some people might not think it's important, everybody needs something that is regularly expected of them in the work of God, their part, participation. Where are you at on this? I praise the Lord for some new folks who joined the choir, some folks that have come to growth visitations that we have once a month not, uh, that used to not be involved in those things. Several have found a way this year to be a part of the good works. The question is, have you? Self-examination, have you? Have you found some way to get involved in your part? If not, then I would say why. Examine yourself. I want to go a step further and say those of us that have already been involved in some way, have we grown in our participation? I believe we're in a church that gives you plenty of opportunities. We just started up the pups and the little giants this past Wednesday for the year. We were asking for help with the little ones. We needed some more help. I don't know if she's got enough, Brother Keith, as far as you know, she got enough. You don't have any idea, do you? Have you even spoken to your wife lately, brother? Praise God. All right, good, good. He thinks she's got enough. Praise. Listen, some of you, that was you a chance. That was you a chance to once a month go up there and wrestle a bunch of maniac children for the glory of God. Amen. You say, what happens up there? The seed gets planted up there to them little ones. The seeds of the gospel get planted up there just like they do in Sunday school. They get planted up there and then they move on. They go to little giants. Brother Charlie gets to reap a whole lot. A whole lot gets saved in little giants because of seeds that were sown up here in the pups. You had a chance. Hey, I've, as I said, we've been asking about the cleaning crews. Hey, this past year we started a bus mechanic team. Some of you get involved in some of these things. If you would just step up, you'd have a chance to, to participate. Showing love like Christ. That third step. Where are you at on this? Last thing, sowing the seed of Christ, evangelization. The final purpose for the church, stay with me, in the life of the Christian is that we equip you, we exhort you, and we give you opportunities to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our 2014 yearly themes, we said we wanted to know more, we want to glow more, get involved in doing the good things of God in front of people that God can get glory, and then we want to sow more. Growing in our evangelizing, growing in our witnessing this year, that we might so more are you doing that can you examine yourself in that area 
Do you give out more tracks? We've got a whole wall of them. We have them laying out here. We print new ones regularly each month. We have special days just about. Let me ask you something. Are you giving out more tracks this year than you were last year? If so, that's growth, and we praise the Lord for it. Find creative ways to do it. Just find something. Listen. Hey, listen to me now. God is holding us responsible for what we hear. He's holding you responsible. Even those of you that are not listening right now will be held responsible at the judgment seat of Christ for this message. Now, see, some of you didn't. You said, what did he just say? Because you weren't listening. <laughs> Here's what I said to those of you that weren't listening. Even those of you that are not listening will have to answer for this message at the judgment seat of Christ. You know why? Because you were in this service and he expected you to listen. Amen. Amen. You say, preacher, why are you being so mean? Come on, this ain't mean. This ain't mean. We're just sissies. <laughs> now, that was a little mean. Don't y'all, how many of y'all been saved 20 years or more? Raise your hand. Don't y'all put your hands back down. Don't y'all remember mean preaching? Raise your hand if you remember mean preaching. Am I doing that right now? No way. Ain't no chance. Mean preaching is when I call you now. I know a preacher in, in Illinois that he'll be on Sunday night and he'll say, Hey, hey, brother and sister so-and-so, where were y'all at this morning? He's got like a thousand in his church, by the way. Where were y'all at this morning? And they'll say, well, we're so-and-so. He'll say, that ain't good enough. Uh, don't be doing that. Yeah, I'm reading his book. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Come on, this ain't me. But this is, listen, but it is time that, that listen, it's time you quit making excuses. Because you never understand something. Some of you have been saved 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and, and you're still between the first two. You're saved and you know it, but you ain't hardly done any growing. And you certainly haven't even, you, and, and this, and here's another thing. Some of you used to be way over here, and now you ain't. And, and we need to quit making excuses for these things and realize our time is short and people are lost and we need to go out and get them for Jesus. Amen. Have you, have you uh, brought anybody to church this year that you personally invited? At least one time. We had the homecoming service, and boy, we did bring a bunch. Praise the Lord for that. Had a whole lot come that day. I praise the Lord for you working on that. You ought to do that more. Examine yourself. Let me ask you this. Have you prayed for our missionaries more this year? The missionaries are sowing the seed of Christ. You can't go to all those places, but you can pray for them as they go. We gave you those books at the mission conference that had every one of them in it. Had things specifically in it you could pray for them about. Have you, do you even know where that book is? We, we got to mature. We got to grow. We got to grow. The Lord expects this of us that have been in church a while. Do you give to missions more than last year? See, that's another way we sow the seed of Christ. We support the missionaries. Are you finding some way to sow more? Let me give you a last verse and we'll be done with this and we'll go to that really sweet thing of baby dedication. They're going to be so thankful y'all wanted to do that tonight. Praise the Lord. Because I could probably preach this for about another hour. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We love that verse. That's a salvation verse. Say amen right there. Amen. And then the next verse says this, and all things are of God. Who hath, listen to this, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. You know what that means? It's talking about salvation, what he just talked about in the previous verse. He said that God made a way that we could be reconciled to him, that we could have a relationship with him. And that way was through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. The gospel came to us. We were born again. Our sins are washed away. And now we can have a relationship with him. He reconciled us to himself. If you understand that, say amen. amen. Then you know what he says after that? And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. See, what does that mean, preacher? That means this. See, this is the one ministry, this last one, this is the one ministry that everybody is called to. Here's what he said. I brought you to myself. I reconciled you to myself. And now I'm calling every one of you to be in the ministry of reconciling others to me. He brought me to himself and now it's my job to try to bring others to him. That's the Look at me. That's the ministry everybody's called to. And listen to this. You're not excused from this one because of your participation ministry. Let me say that again. You're not excused from number four over here because you finally found a way to participate over here in number three. No, we're all supposed to do both. We're all supposed to be involved in evangelization. All of us. 
no matter what we do, no matter what our particular job is in the work of the ministry, we're all in the ministry of reconciliation. We're supposed to participate in it. So as we head down the final stretch, and Brother David, you can come to the piano if you'd like, Miss Scott and whoever is going to come. We're heading down this final stretch, the final quarter of the year. I want us to do a self-examination tonight. I don't want our themes and our banners to be just for looks. I believe the Lord wants to see some spiritual growth and maturity. I pray this all, every week for sure. Most of the time, multiple times in a week, I pray this for our church. I pray, Lord, bless our church. I pray some other things about it. And then I'll say this, help us to grow. And I'll say this, before I say grow in number, I say, Lord, help us to grow spiritually. I want us to grow spiritually because I really believe as we grow spiritually, we will automatically grow numerically. And I do pray for that. I believe the Lord won't see these pews filled. I believe we'll answer for these pews. Amen. I believe we need to take them serious. If there's pew space around you, you ought to want to fill it. You ought to take it personal. You ought to take a bath if that's the problem. Whatever it is, get involved. For those who have been saved 10 years, 20 years, 30 plus years, I've been saved about 34 years. For those of us who have been saved 10, 20, 30 years, where are you? Self-examination. I'm not going to tell you where you are. I'm not judging you tonight. Examine yourself, Paul said. And if you're not over in here and you've been saved 10, 20, and 30 years, then immediately now you're coming up with the reasons why. And I want to tell you they're probably not good enough in the eyes of God. But I've been hurt ter I know, I know. But I'm telling you, at the judgment seat of Christ, you're not going to say that. You're not going to say, Lord, them last 15 years, I, I didn't really do anything because they hurt me. You're going to be looking at the one that still has the holes. It's just not going to be a good excuse, whatever it is. Those of you that have been in our church now for three years, four years, five years, where are you on the banner? If you need to grow, then get in on some of these things. We've got the, the Wednesday night ministry Brother Steve's been doing called the Progressors where he just teaches you some fundamentals of the faith and also teaches you then what our church kind of believes about certain things. And it's a 13 or 14 or 15 week thing. He's getting ready to start it back up. Raise your hand, Brother Steve. If you think you need to grow in some of the knowledge stuff, go see Brother Steve. Get in on that on Wednesday nights. It'll be good. Get in on something. Where are we in this area, all of us, of reaching for more? Do you know more? Do you glow more? Do you sow more than you did this time last year? If not, then why? Here's what I want us to do. I want us to come as a church. And the baby dedication will only take a couple of minutes. We'll be fine. I want us to come as a church and ask God to give us a strong finish to 2014. I want you to ask Him to help us to indeed reach more in this last quarter. And I want you to talk to him about yourself and where you are and what steps you need to take to progress. Would you stand with me? Brother David's going to sing. You can go ahead and come. Father, I pray you bless the invitation time now. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and sing, Brother David. If you need to come, why don't we have just a bunch of the church